So you started controlling your nutrition and eating in a calorie deficit in the hopes of losing body fat. But as time passes by, you may notice also your muscles getting smaller and you feel weaker in your training sessions. This begs the question, are you losing fat or are you losing muscle while maintaining a calorie deficit? In this video, I will discuss how you can make sure that you lose body fat effectively while maintaining a calorie deficit and also preserve your muscle well. So you can come out of your fat loss phase looking leaner and feeling at your best. First, let's discuss how common it actually is to lose muscle while you are in a calorie deficit. Some people believe that as you lose a certain amount of weight, not all of that weight can be fat and you will lose some percentage of muscle as well. But it does not have to be that way. Unless you want to go to an extremely low body fat percentage or you are an advanced athlete that wants to get leaner than usual, you can at least maintain muscle in a calorie deficit. As discussed in my recent body recomposition video, there's even data to suggest that beginner trainees can build some muscle while losing fat. So you don't have to worry about losing the hard-earned muscle that you have, as long as we consider a few key fat loss variables. There are five main variables we need to get right to ensure muscle maintenance during a fat loss phase. The first and most important variable is that you set a realistic fat loss target. I understand, you want to get leaner and you want it fast. But this typically leads to lowering your calories too quickly, which then can form a threat to muscle maintenance. A classic example of this is a 2011 study on trained athletes. When the athletes had a slower weight loss goal of losing about 0.7% of their body weight in a week, they were able to maintain muscle well. While the group with a more aggressive weight loss goal of losing 1.4% of their body weight in a week lost a bit of muscle. This helps explain why research suggests to have a weight loss target of losing between 0.5 and 1% of your body weight per week if muscle maintenance is the goal. So if you weigh 80 kilograms, aim to lose between 0.4 and 0.8 kilograms per week. This may not sound extremely fast, but remember, you probably don't care a ton about what the number on the scale says, what you care more about is how you look and feel. And this will be positively influenced by your ability to maintain muscle while losing fat. As a rule of thumb, maintaining a 20-25% to calorie deficit is a good target for effective fat loss while retaining muscle. So if you maintain your weight at 2500 calories per day, aim to consume between 1900 and 2000 calories per day for effective fat loss. The second most important variable to take into consideration is resistance training. The human body is quite fascinating. It's able to survive in the most extreme conditions due to its adaptive capabilities. But this also means that your body adapts accordingly if you start lifting weights less compared to before. If you start scaling back your lifting workouts while in a calorie deficit, your body will start seeing your muscle as unnecessary extra weight and you will start noticing some muscle loss. We want to avoid your body seeing your muscle as unnecessary by continuing a consistent lifting approach. The type of training that helped you build muscle in the first place is the same exact training that will help you maintain muscle in a calorie deficit. So in essence, if you transition from something like a lean bulk to a fat loss phase, you don't have to change your training much. A common mistake I see people make when they start their fat loss phase is that they now train with higher repetitions and lighter weights in the hopes of toning their muscles more. But research clearly shows we cannot spot reduce fat by training a muscle with lighter weights. Other research shows that higher repetition training also does not burn enough extra calories to meaningfully increase fat loss. So really, continue lifting the same way you were as before your fat loss phase to help you effectively maintain muscle. Your strength progress might be slower as you are restricting calories, but if you are at least maintaining your strength, you are in a good space. The third variable is nutrition related again, and that is making sure you consume enough protein on a daily basis. The role of protein during a fat loss phase is simple. It increases muscle preservation and keeps you full for longer. That's why it's highly beneficial to maintain a somewhat elevated protein intake during your fat loss phase. But some people take this the wrong way. Because a higher protein intake is beneficial, some people think that they have to stuff themselves with protein throughout the day. But if we look at the research, you actually don't need that much protein to effectively maintain muscle. As I have shared in many videos before, eating at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight is a good protein target. So you don't need to eat way over 2 grams per kilogram of your body weight in protein. I have found that maintaining a more moderate but still sufficient protein target helps you have more balanced meals which increases the flexibility of your fat loss nutrition. Now, the fourth variable we need to consider is that you also want to avoid overdoing your cardio workouts. Adding some cardio sessions to your routine for more calorie burn is all good. 
but we want to avoid these cardio sessions being so dominant in your training that they start negatively impacting your workout performance. So if you do engage in cardio during a fat loss phase, I recommend you keep it limited to 2-3 intense cardio sessions per week with the exception of walks. Going for daily walks is definitely an underutilized fat loss tool. With my online coaching clients, before I make them do any extra formal cardio, we always look into whether it's possible to increase calorie burn through walks. Walking burns good calories and has a minimal impact on your fatigue levels. One 2017 study found that walking an extra 2.5 hours per week while maintaining a calorie deficit boosts fat loss progress by 20%. So while doing some extra cardio is fine, I would first look into whether you can increase your calorie burn through doing more walks. Since walking as your main form of cardio will also be more conducive to muscle maintenance. The last variable we need to consider is your sleep. A 2010 study investigated the effects of sleep on body composition while maintaining a calorie deficit. The researchers found that sleeping 8 hours per night resulted in more fat loss and muscle preservation compared to sleeping only 5 hours per night. A 2018 study supports these findings. Proper sleep has a direct positive impact on your muscle maintenance, which is why if you are in a calorie deficit, we want to pay extra attention to getting those quality hours of sleep. So to sum up, if you take into consideration the 5 variables discussed, you have nothing to worry about and you will maintain muscle just fine during your fat loss phase. Now, there may still be instances in which you feel a bit smaller while maintaining a calorie deficit. But remember, this is part of the process. As you maintain a calorie deficit, you may also lose some glycogen and water weight, which can make your muscles look a bit deflated temporarily. With a moderate calorie deficit, consistent training, enough protein and good sleep, you will do great on your fat loss process. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better understanding on how you can set up your fat loss phase to effectively maintain muscle while losing fat. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video.